Well, it is day two of the president's trip to the UK. Trump met with the outgoing British Prime Minister Theresa May at 10 Downing Street. The two later held a joint press conference and discussed a trade deal between our countries. We're going to have absolutely an agreement on Huawei and everything else. We have an incredible intelligence relationship and we will be able to work out any differences. I think everything with the trade deal is on the table. When, you, when you're dealing on trade, everything's on the table. So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. But everything will be on the table, absolutely. The president also addressed the protests that are taking place there. Watch. And I didn't see the protesters until just a little while ago, and it was a very, very small group of people put in for political reasons. So it was fake news. Thank you. But across the city, large crowds of protesters took to the streets. It all began here at one of the main squares in London. The giant orange balloon of President Trump, showing him as a scowling baby wearing a diaper, also made an appearance again today. There were some scuffles between the pro and anti-Trump protesters, including this man who had a milkshake thrown on him. Meantime, royal pageantry was on full display last night at a state banquet at Buckingham Palace. But some are saying the president broke royal protocol. Trump put his hand on Queen Elizabeth's back after praising her as, quote, a great woman for her work during World War II. Protocol or not, I think that's being a little nitpicky. I think he was just showing uh, respect towards her and her service ship during World War II, especially being a mechanic and doing all that she did. That was against the grain during that time. However, I can see how any time that he doesn't like the way the narrative shifts, he just points to fake news, which, in my opinion, Lindsay, is uh, him also then touting fake news because he can't acknowledge something when it really is actual. Right, but he's talking about his perspective. He went down there to do something positive to build a relationship with our ally. And and you want him to go there and talk about a protest that you say, okay, 75,000 people, but a huge protest looks like something that we saw in Egypt, took over the entire streets, overthrew a government. This is not what I call some amazing protest that's going to blow our minds. So Could I think he, he went down that, there. though? I appreciate you saying that. But I he, do think 75,000 people. Trump is not Lindsay, right? I have a calm way of communicating. Like, he literally won his presidency on being himself. And so he's going to say, I'm not going to feed into this nonsense when there's baby balloons of me in diapers. And yes, it's hilarious as a human. I'm going to laugh about that. But really, it's kind of obnoxious. Just like almost he was him being on a toilet himself, seat. though, during his election. He was a New York Democrat. I think he figured out that he needed to get some votes, and he knew where to get that. He'd go with the evangelicals with the abortions. He, you go and get some people from the South with some unpleasant things to say. That's why he, he initially started with the birtherism, which is racism. Uh, and he, he grabbed those people, and he grabbed those votes. So I think, I don't know if he ran as himself, because Donald Trump was a billionaire playboy in the 80s when we knew him. And when... He started running for president. That's when we get the s hole countries. Uh, you know, Mexicans are rapists. Uh, the birtherism. You know, Obama's not from this country. You know, so that's. Let's be honest about who he is and, and where he got his votes from. But I think three years down the line, he showed us that this is who he wants to be or who he's going to be. Correct. So now we're here, and you want him to not go build a relationship with our ally. Like, what is he supposed to do? He's the president. He has to go over there and continue to build these relationships and do his job. If you don't like the CEO of your company, they're not going to still run the company. So can we have next a balance, year? though? I appreciate we're what you're saying and I just want to see a balance here I want to give him accolades for building uh, the relationships with the royals he and was, our allies. He was tweeting at the mayor calling him. The uh, mayor wrote an entire op-ed about him first. Well that's because he uh, had a Muslim ban and there's a lot of Muslims in that area and it was very offensive and he himself is Muslim I believe so that probably, I don't, I don't that probably sparked I mean, some of that whatever we do something we talk about a story we don't even know what he was there trading for that's what he was there for to make this relationship to talk about trade we're not doing that we're showing balloons of him over the crowd just like a baby I mean it's like listen this isn't our country that we're representing outside of our country this is embarrassing my parents fought for this country my dad fought for this country your parents fought for this country he didn't we need he had to bone have, spurs I know but we need to have some some level of respect for our president because he was voted in. Obama did a great job. You can't have, Obama couldn't run again even if we wanted to. But if there's a picture of Obama in diapers and we were hanging it above, I understand. People need to have more respect. I get the fact that people he doesn't respect other people, but he is our president. We can't do anything about that right now. We need to have some respect and some some give and take in some this. It's either ground. you're like you're on one side or you hate him, and then we're showing pictures of yeah, him in diapers. I, believe me, I, I I want respect on on both fronts. I really do. I hear you, Jeff, and I appreciate your stance. But I also think it's very it's it's constitutional for people to not be complacent and say we want better. 
Now, the balloon thing, yes, you could say that's childish. I agree with that. But what about not, calling Ted Cruz's wife ugly? I was just going to say, I want. But guys, you're telling a bit, people you're to go final thought. We got to move on. Yeah, believe me. I want our, our president to be held on a higher standard. But Europe 100%. could leave the European Union, right? And we need to discuss trade deals in the future with Europe. So we need to go over there and have these conversations, whether you like Trump or not. But then don't yeah. act like there wasn't a, a political protest when there wasn't. I mean, when there was. But do you want I saw people there, but he's not, like, affected by that. But for political reasons. You know what I mean? I know we got to go. But you want him focused on that. Hey, there's a big protest out here. They want him to say something so they get the Trump news. Listen, there wasn't a protest. Let's go back to the trade. I, that's what I want to hear him talk about. I, I would love hear that. Just to be his president. Boom. Then say that. Then right. don't dismiss I totally get it and call it saying. fake news because then you're calling everybody alive. And I get what you're saying, and I like that we can have yeah. a discussion Me and talk too. about this instead of throwing milkshakes at each other. I agree. You know what I mean? Like I, people take it to the next level and it gets out of control and then you're fighting in the streets and it's like, it's craziness. I agree. It's We're crazy. in a really We're divisive wait. time. We are. We to figure something else out. Final it's, thought, and then we do have to go I, to the next you know, I don't know where we have to go is more important than this, Sam, but honestly, like, it's just crazy to me that we're like, yeah, let's talk policy. He he never denounced uh, the racists in Charlottesville. He He's actively been been using uh, dog whistles this entire time. He's attacked women. He's attacked our president's race. And then when we get it now, now it's time to talk policy after three years of doing everything horrible up until this point. Right, that, Alan, that's I, a, I that's, appreciate you bringing this up, but I also, you have to understand, like, we voted this person in office. You might not have. I might not have. Anybody at this table might not have. However, you have to understand, like he everyone lost who's the popular vote, though. But everyone who's complaining about him and his abortion rules and his, like white women voted him in. Like that was overwhelmingly they voted him in. They didn't go against. They he didn't lost vote for the popular Hillary. vote by three million votes. So my point votes. is, that, uh, people of color voted him in. So like, if you have a problem with it, 2020 is less or more than a year away, just a little bit more. Change it. And if you're going to keep p nitpicking at this man, no one's going to get anywhere. It's people are just nitpicking. Gonna, but don't no, people are constitutional. He wasn't elected by the people. He's elected by so the electoral college. The electoral college. Yeah, process. So that means you have to go to your local office. No, the electoral college was meant to keep uh, a certain amount of power in states like the South. Then it, it is a slavery-based system. Let's be honest. About about this. Dude, I That's why they're changing it. I'm with you. Arkansas, America has a checkered Wyoming. past, a very uncomfortable yes, so situation it, we need to so talk about. So it doesn't we matter about the popular them. vote. Like, then all you have to do is win Ohio and Pennsylvania. Process, we need to change that. Then let's get in there and vote for the people who can change it. We did, and he lost, and he's still our president. No, we so, didn't vote for the electoral college to change. We voted course, for that, president, well, that's not and you said the system didn't work. in our lifetime, I would assume. I would like it to, too, People thought we wouldn't have a black president in our lifetime, and we did. So you got to try somewhere. We'll see. And he lost those states, too. When Trump starts, he already has... 30 states in the bag, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, so Florida, it doesn't matter. All he's got to do is win Pennsylvania, Ohio, and maybe Michigan and Wisconsin, and he's in there, even though the people spoke and the three million more people said absolutely not. So I'm not super excited about this, this election because it was bought and paid for, and we know this, but we sit here and talk about trade policy, but we know this isn't the case. This country is already done, and it was set up and weighted in this, in this way because once the slaves left the South, there were not enough white people down there to balance this out with the numbers, so they give states like Wyoming with four people in them, uh, two senators, just like California, that's got 55 million people in them. But do you want to so throw we, our hands up and not vote? We have 2020. We did up. vote, and look where we are. Well, you can't, the solution's not giving up. That's a good point. Okay. I know. No, it, You're a lot listen, more optimistic than I am. I think optimism is a good thing, though. I mean, I understand, considering our history, Al, why, why everybody would feel pessimistic, but I think that uh, we, considering how many young people are about to become voters and are voters since the last election, I think change is coming. I do.